Okay, so we are ready to start. Um, we have a presentation here for uh, half an hour, and uh, the next half an hour on Sonas Match. And Sonas Match is uh, a tool, a demonstrator, uh, coming out of the CNGL and the LRC at the University of Limerick. And the interesting thing about Solas and Solas Match is that it's not, you know, it has moved from being a, a research demonstrator to a tool that we are about to use in the Reddit Foundation. So this is why you see a couple of logos on this, uh, on this slide. So um, Solas Match is, uh, you know, was initially developed as an organization research center, the CNGL, and is moving into the Reddit Foundation to address problems that the Valletta Foundation has working with uh, volunteers. And there is a incentive here, so if you get bored during the presentation, go to the Foundation.org, <coughs> click on Donate and become a friend of the Valletta Foundation. And it you know, just costs you five euro a month. You won't notice it, but it will help the Valletta Foundation tremendously. So if you get bored, do that um, during the presentation. And we'll check afterwards how many people have signed up. <laughs> So that, you, know, you all know about localization, but there are different aspects to localization. I just thought before it gets too bored, um, there is one slide uh, with a different aspect to localization than you might be familiar with. So there is a, you know, I don't know whether you know who they are. Um, it's a series on the telly, and they had one series where they told uh, a Mexican uh, living in the States to take the pills once a day. Yeah? And, uh, he uh, looked at it, at the instructions, and saw once, and said, ah, once, you know, that's 11. So he took them 11 times a day, and came back the next day terribly sick because he had taken too, too many pills. There's another nice scene from a, from a film that you might have seen, it's in Glorious Bastards, and it's, it's in this tavern, this German tavern, where the guys order uh, three drinks, and they should have ordered it like that, with the SS officer sitting in front of them, but they did it like that, and then you know, all hell broke loose uh, because he immediately realized you know, they're not Germans as they pretended to be. They were actually American and British agents uh, infiltrating Germany. So um, localization can seriously damage your health. Uh, <laughs> but not just your health and not just in films, but also uh, in real life. And can also damage your freedom and your prosperity. So we've been talking about uh, you know, localization being done for commercial gain, for profit, and there's nothing wrong with it. And that, you know, that uh, pays most of us a you know, relatively acceptable salary, I guess. Uh, it's a 30 billion US dollar industry, or more, and, and growing every year. You know, it employs in Ireland, as we heard, uh, 16,000 people, and over the world probably you know, hundreds of thousands of people. Um, but it serves just about 1 billion people on the planet. You know, that leaves out six billion. So you know, what, what do we do with those six billion? And, uh, and, and what does it mean for those people who are not being served information and knowledge in their language? So if, you know, if localization helps you to uh, address healthcare, justice, finance, food production, research, and education, then lack of localization you know, can seriously <coughs> damage all those you know, very important uh, areas of your life and, and, and affect you personally. So there should really be a health warning on, uh, I don't know, not on cigarette packages, but on other packages as well, saying that, you know, that lack of localization can really seriously damage your, your health. So um, we realized that and we decided well, we're going to do something about it about two years ago, two and a half years ago by now. And uh, we set up the Roletta Foundation. Some of you, most of you might have heard about it. Uh, the idea is that you know, localization uh, is not a nice to have, you know, translation is not a nice to have, it's exactly something that each and every one of us on the planet has a fundamental, universal human right to. Uh, if, you, if you read uh, uh, the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights in Article 2, you know, it says that nobody can, should be discriminated against because of their, say, their, their gender, uh, their religion, uh, their color, and their language. So, uh, you know, it's at the same level as all those other rights is the right to your own language. And that's something that, you know, people seem to forget sometimes when they just talk about, you know, the, uh, the, you know, uh, the language industry. 
uh, and the for-profit approach to localization. And, and I say, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but there's another aspect to it. And uh, the fact that you know, we don't cover uh, the six billion uh, out of the seven billion uh, of the world's population has an effect on those six billion. So the Red Foundation has been set up, as I said, two and a half years ago. We are working, he's just packing it in. <laughs> Uh, so we have, we have, we have uh, lots of supporters uh, among the industry, individual um, uh, friends and colleagues who have joined us. We have a 30-person strong advisory committee and some of the companies uh, involved and uh, some of the companies that those uh, people on the advisory committee work for are listed here just to give you an idea. It's a non-profit company, uh, so it's not owned by anybody, it's owned by the members, uh, governed by a board. Uh, own, um, and it has the advisory committee um, that uh, helps us to go into the right direction. There's two employees now and uh, also some developers helping us in the LRC. Those are some of the organizations that we have been working with over the, the last two years. Uh, you know, there's some small ones there, um, some based in Ireland, some based and active internationally, and some big ones. So for example, the, economic, uh, the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, um, there are also some organizations that do really quite specialized translations. So, you know, if you think back about our discussions uh, yesterday, you know, the, the idea that uh, community translation is bad and that if you want good quality translation, you know, you go to a professional, uh, I doubt that seriously. And we can show you evidence that that is actually not always, at least not always true. Because we have done uh, translations of the medical journal, of the community eye health journal, um, you know, and uh, our clients were more than happy with the work that we have been doing and that we have been uh, providing them with. So, uh, last year we uh, launched a one-year social localization initiative uh, on a boat, uh, which was a famine ship, it was like a replica of a famine ship that is in Dublin Harbour, it's called the Jeannie Johnson. And we met there for an evening where um, we celebrated local, uh, social localization with our volunteers, with the organizations that we work with, uh, and with some funders. And uh, on the night, we had uh, one gentleman down there on the right uh, from Exlated, uh, the owner of Exlated, who uh, did something that I had never expected, uh, which was he signed a 30,000 euro check for the Relative Foundation, which helped us to launch this 100,000 uh, euro uh, investment in, in social localization. Um, that we are halfway through now. <coughs> so, um, coming back to the topic of the talk, um, the background to the SOLAS match development and the need for it. Um, our vision is to have and to enable uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people with language expertise to help those hundreds and thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of communities that have a requirement for uh, language and translation services. There is no language barrier. The barrier is not the language. Languages are an opportunity. They're an opportunity to express ourselves, to be who we are, and to, to share that with others. Uh, the barrier is access to language services. So what we are trying to remove is that barrier, which is the access to language services by linking up people who have language expertise with people who require it. So we have looked, at, we looked around, we tried different systems, uh, we did some pilot projects with, uh, with existing systems, and we found that none of those were really suitable um, to uh, address our requirements, which is the first requirement is that we uh, match people, volunteers with language skills, with the tasks, so with translation tasks. So there's an organization that needs a file translated, there are volunteers that have language skills, and we have to make sure that the right task you know, finds the right volunteer. And that seems really easy, but it is not. And when we looked around, we didn't find a system that could do that. Uh, and then we talked about that to people, and you know, some <coughs> said, well, you know, what you're trying to do is like match.com, uh, or similar sites. So you know, uh, it's very trying to match people. So what we're trying to match is tasks with people. So we started to research that within the CNGL. We had a Rosetta Foundation Design Fest, and we have some IP holders here amongst us who, who were there at this, uh, this Design Fest, who came up with the ideas uh, of, of Solas Match. And then it took us a while, and over the last, especially over the last couple of months, uh, with the help of two uh, genius developers, um, 
Scratches of UL, um, Sean Mooney, uh, David O'Carroll, uh, we, we uh, developed and brought the idea into reality. Um, and you can actually, uh, there's the links there that you can, you can go to once you have signed up to become a fan of the Rosetta Foundation. Uh, if you're still bored, um, you can go to demo.traumans.org uh, and have a look at uh, Solace Match. Um, and you can provide us with some feedback as well. So, um, Solace Match is part of a wider Solace development, and again, you can see more details of that uh, during the Innovation Showcase uh, during lunch. We also have Solace Productivity, which addresses the need to provide volunteer translators with an environment where they can actually perform the, the translation task. So once they've found the task, uh, they then need to perform the task. Finding the task is Solace Match. Performing the task will happen in Solace Productivity. Solace Productivity is still a research demonstrator, uh, but we intend to, to develop that further uh, over, the, over the next year uh, to a point where it actually can be deployed. So, we follow uh, the three uh, very famous, uh, or the, the one very famous design principle, ORM, uh, which uh, stands for open, right, and minimalistic. So open, this is the sign that you might have seen uh, uh, on Wednesday evening at the Chinese restaurant. It said open. <laughs> That's actually the same sign, funny enough. Um, but what it means is that we won't, won't want to put barriers into people, uh, into people's way to, to join us. We want to make it really easy to join, we don't want them to fill in forms uh, or do test translations. We, you know, we, if, if somebody comes and says, we want to help you, we will say, welcome. Thank you very much. And they can start right away. Second one is, stands for, the, the R stands for right. So we want to make sure that the right task finds the right translator quickly and easily <coughs> and without any uh, delay. And M stands for uh, minimalistic or minimalist. Uh, that means that you know, we don't want a crowded screen with loads of options. We just want to get people, um, make it very easy for people to, when once they have found the task, identify, <coughs> download it, translate it, and, and send it back up. So keep it, we will keep it to a minimum on the surface and allow them, as they use the system, uh, to, to fine tune it to, the, to their needs. And we will also develop the system in such a way that it can uh, fine tune itself, and we'll see a demo of that in a, in a minute. So open, the O stands for you know, don't stand in the way, the R is for you know, serve the right task to the right person, and M is a crisp look and feel of the interface. So that was my sh not so short introduction, and we're switching over to uh, the demo, and uh, uh, we have to plug the, uh, the Mac into uh, projector into uh, the uh, laptop now, PC, and um, Sean and Dave are going to demonstrate Solace Match. One of them is going to show you how you would use Solace Match from the perspective of an organization or a community that has a translation requirement. You know, they, what you will hopefully take away from that is how easy it is to, to use the system, how easy it is to upload a task. And <coughs> then Sean will uh, uh, represent a volunteer that uh, goes to uh, chance.org and uses so as much for you know, finding a task, downloading it, and then after having it completed, uploading it back again. And uh, it, it'll be easier than switching between Mac and laptops. Uh, so uh, I hand you over to um, Today, who's going to uh, show you how to use Solace, how an organization or community would use Solace Match? Uh, okay, so I'm going to play the role of an organization in this demo. Uh, when you first go to Solace Match website, uh, you can register by either supplying an email and password or uh, an email that's enabled with OpenID. Um, as soon as you're registered with the system, you can create an organization and start uploading tasks for translation. So at the moment, I will log in with a user who is already registered and a member of an organization. Um, the client dashboard is the place that organization members will go to manage uh, their organization tasks. Uh, multiple users of the system can be uh, members of the same organization, so they will share this view in managing the organization's task and uploading new tasks to the system. 
This view uh, shows tasks related to the current organization, in this case the Rosetta Foundation is the name of the organization. Uh, it has uh, links to each of the tasks so that you can alter the details of the task or, or view details. It has the current status of the task, so whether it has been claimed, uh, how far along the translation process it is, and if it can be downloaded. Uh, you can also track the status of uh, any task in the system, so if you're tracking a, a task, you will get email updates for whenever the state has changed. Like if the translator uploaded a new version of the file, you get an email notification with a link to the latest version of the file. Uh, you also have uh, the ability to archive any task. This removes it from all task streams in the system and removes it from the system in general and archives it if the organization ever needs it again. So for the moment, I'll just click here to add a new task. So when you're adding a task, you just browse for a file. Um, when you've uploaded the file, you get a number of options to fill out. So the descriptive text is what the file is identified by. It's what will appear in users' task streams so that they can identify what this is about. So I'll just say, conference. Uh, the task impact is who is affected by the task. So this is a form of encouragement for users so that there's a direct uh, there's a direct line in what they can see the impact of the task will be. So if it's users of a certain system or uh, members of a certain community or whatnot. So in this just the conference attendees. Uh, you can enter a context of reference, which is a URL, which would give more uh, context to the task. So if you're translating a website, you can enter the website's URL so they can actually go and view the website in its native language and then use that to start translating. Uh, you have a language list here, so this is the source language. Uh, we have we support over six and a half thousand languages, I think. So you just select your language and your region. And in the back end everything is stored as uh, language code identifiers so that it can be swapped around between different tools. So you just specify source and target. You can add multiple targets. Uh, the more targets that are there, for every target uh, language, it will create a new task with identical details, except for the, the target having changed. Um, so for tags, then this is what. Uh, sorry, this is the. These are the tags that are related to this task. So. Uh, it's used for sorting tasks in the task stream. So I'll just use that. And then the word count, how many words are actually need to be translated for this task. So, so now I'll hand you over to Sean, who will play the role of the translator. <coughs> Hear me now? So if you look at the right hand side, we can see that it describes the three tags, LLC, conference, and chapter 11. And the task that was uploaded is at the top of my task string because it contains each of the tags I've subscribed to. 
a lot of tasks uh, also all are based on my native language and how the system has evolved to learn to know about the system and then integrate that into the order. If I select a task, I am sent with the details that I input, um, a preview of the task, and the option, a link to the organization that uploaded where I want to find out more information. Um, I can download the preview of the task, which can be opened, um, to view before I came the task. And if I'm happy with, with the task, if I can click I save it to my desktop, and I can promise to translate the task. Once this is done, I can use any translation tool that I have locally to translate the task. And when I'm finished, I can go to my profile and upload the task. In the profile, as well as allowing the ability to see your active tasks, which you can see as often, you can also manage your, your current tags. You can view your badges. So at the moment, you can see that I've filled out my profile, I've read through the system, I've set my native language. I can also add biographical information about um, that people know my background, and I can see what organizations I'm a member of if I am a member. So when a user has finished translating documents, they can return um, to their profile and select the document properly. In this case, I'm going to re the same document and then come back to the Okay, so then as an organization member, uh, I go back to my client dashboard uh, to view any tasks that have changed their status. And here we can see uh, the NRC conference has uh, changed the status from not a task not claimed to download updated files. So if I click this, I can then download the file uh, and archive the task to mark it as completed. Alright. Thank you very much. Uh, um, so, um, just to, to switch over back to the... Um, so, uh, where we are at the moment is that uh, we have completed, uh, we, have, we have moved from a research demonstrator to uh, a pilot phase where we have had uh, different reviews uh, by different groups. And uh, the next step is that we will pilot it with actual clients of the Renta Foundation and also make it open for <coughs> an open beta review. Um, in terms of you know, new features that we're going to add and future development, um, your motivation is something that has come up quite a lot uh, over like the last day and a half in, in, in the context of social localization. Um, we are addressing that aspect by um, looking at the you know, by making sure that the design is, is, is simple, intuitive, and, and, and easy to use, so that the technology doesn't become a, a block for participation. Um, we will take on board and, and work with, uh, with, with with feedback, um, not just. Um, feedback um, from the organizations uh, to the work of the, of the translators or the volunteers, but also feedback from the volunteers in relation to the tasks that they receive from, from the organization. <coughs> and we make that visible within the system, and we recognize, obviously, the contributions of the volunteers, and also uh, the work that our partner organizations, the, the organizations that are using uh, so as much, uh, are, are, are doing. In terms of quality, um, there is uh, a little bit of a question and that, that, that has come up and that has uh, been mentioned a couple of times here where, uh, during the last day and a half, where, we, um, you know, where some people propose that we should uh, look at you know, professional quality uh, versus um, volunteer quality or kind of user quality. Uh, and, and there are different aspects to that. So we are, we are looking at that too. So we, we, are, we are thinking about you know, rating feedback, rank, ranking, and, and, and pairing as mechanisms to provide feedback on, on quality and to track quality. And in some <coughs> it's going to be more important maybe than in other systems because we are open at the beginning and that what we need to do is as people perform tasks, 
you know, we have to make sure that we monitor how their work is being perceived by the consumers of those translations um, and, uh, and, and make that visible and uh, implement some uh, mechanism to, to reflect um, the quality of the work that they perform. Uh, Taftless optimization is another uh, aspect, that's called the magic, that, that's the mechanism that sorts the list uh, of tasks according to uh, the type of user or the, the person that, uh, that is logged on and looks at that task list because the task list should adapt like a search in Google should adapt to uh, the person who is looking for a task. Um, and you know the, the background, the qualifications, uh, the experience, and the interests of that person. So an example is that we had in the Rosa Foundation, we had we have one of the organizations that we work with is a Catholic Girl Guides, and we had a translator who is Muslim, you know, who could perform the task, but he said, you know, no hard feelings. But I'm a Muslim. I'm not going to do you know volunteer work for a Catholic organization. And you can think about other examples where you know that might happen. Workflow is, is another important issue that we're going to look at. So um, at the moment, we're just dealing with simple tasks and simple single tasks, and we will break that down uh, into jobs and tasks and then put them in, in, in a workflow. Chunker is something, again, that came up a couple of times. You know, we need to get the, the size right. And the size, you know, whether it's right or not, uh, of the task will depend on the user. So how much time does a user have? You know, how much uh, experience, how quick can a user perform a task? It can depend on the content. So is it difficult content to deal with? Or is it easy content to deal with? You know, uh, how long, again, how long will it take to, uh, to translate that uh, particular content? And it will depend on the platform. So if you serve a translation task on uh, a big screen, you know, it can be longer and you can provide more context. If you, uh, if you serve it maybe on a tablet or on a mobile phone, you might just want to have a sentence. Security is another issue, so we, you know, we need to flag spammers or users that are not real users, that are just people that kind of uh, flood the system, and we need to make sure that you know, they can't do any damage. Um, and then at the moment, we've just, you've just seen two roles, so we need to introduce the third man, um, back in the famous film uh, in Vienna, and the nice music. Uh, and that is, uh, the role that is uh, formerly known as the project manager. Um, so we need somebody, we need a role, we need a person, a role for a person that monitors what is going on in the system uh, so that we can intervene. So an example would be that if somebody posts the tasks and it's, it should be ready within the next three weeks and nobody picks it up. So we need to know that those things are happening and that we need to be able to intervene. Uh, rollout, this is what I mentioned, so we have done an internal review, uh, we, have, we are doing an external review um, with the Better Foundation Advisory Committee, and um, we are about to start uh, actual pilot projects and open the review up to, to everybody, and, and you're, you're more than welcome to, to participate in this uh, open review, and we really evaluate your, your feedback. Um, the last point uh, is on, uh, on licensing and IP, and that is, you know, something that, you know, if you come up with an idea, that's something that you don't really want to think about. And it's boring, and it's legal, um, but it's very, very important. Uh, because if you want to open something up to the community, you have to make sure that uh, the community, could, community can participate in, uh, in the development and in the use of the system. So um, the background is, as I mentioned, that the idea was developed at the Rosetta Foundation Design Fest in San Francisco in uh, February uh, 2011 by a group of well, we were all together, maybe 20, 25 people, and we broke up in groups in the group that was looking at such much. Uh, there were four or five people involved. So we want to take those ideas from that design fest and uh, develop, we have developed it as part of uh, the RC and GL work uh, in, in, in UL. Um, we went through an IP process, and at the moment and we are, um, we have an agreement with the CNG and the, uh, the uh, technology transfer officer in, in UL um, to, uh, to license this out to, uh, to the Weather Foundation. And um, it's also the, the basic version of SODAS match is available for download uh, on localization.ie forward slash SODAS. The goal is to support really, the goal of this whole exercise is to support the ends and objectives of the Weather Foundation, which are kind of language matters. Um, 
it's, it's language doesn't matter. It's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a right that everybody of us has. You know, everybody should be able to speak and communicate in their own language um, and uh, not just receive information, but also share their own knowledge with others in their, in their language. And that is something that at the moment is not possible. It's possible for people who can pay for it, but it's not possible for people who can't pay for it, or it's not possible for content that is not commercially viable. So it's not just about languages, it's also about content. I think this is it. So I hope uh, you have done those two things. In the last half an hour, you logged on to ResaFoundation.org and clicked on donate and became a friend of the Reza Foundation. And uh, you had to look at demo.traumas.org. Traumas stands for Translation Commons. Um, we chose that domain because it's short and hopefully memorable and it was available. Uh, whereas SOLAS, uh, the Irish government decided to set up an employment agency uh, and call it SOLAS. So that kind of uh, didn't help. So have a look at those two sites and uh, give us some feedback and be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much. Thanks, Renat, and Sean, and Abby. Um, we're now a little bit overrunning, so unless there's a very urgent question, I think we should move on. <laughs>